one of the things we wanted to test when we moved was, is life better in the country or not? And I have to say, I haven't had two years there now. Welcome to Real Help with me, Carl Henry. Folks, it's one of those episodes we do every now and again. We did one a couple of weeks back and we got a huge response to it. It's a top questions episode. Every week on my Instagram account, I do a QA and a and I respond very, very quickly with a few short words. So I thought I would have a look at the top questions that come in and answer them in more detail on the podcast. If you want to know how you can ask those questions, have a look at my Instagram at CarlHenryPT, normally on a Saturday or a Sunday. You'll see the question box, just pop it in there and I'll do my very best to answer it there and then. If I can't, because we get so many, we'll put a list together and we'll get through the top ones on the podcast. So here are five of the top questions we've had over the course of the last couple of weeks. The first question that we've had over the course of the last few weeks is all about whey protein. When should you take it? How much should you take? And what protein does generally? Um, it's a really good question because everywhere I look on Instagram, I see protein, protein, and more protein. And people are confused. I think generally in terms of health and wellness, the area of nutrition is really complicated and it doesn't have to be. First things first, protein helps you build and recover. So you're building muscle, maintaining muscle and recovering from life first and foremost, but then from exercise. That's pretty much what it does. The foods that it's contained in, you're looking at your meats, you're looking at pulses, eggs, tofu, fish, chicken, turkey, steak, the leaner the meat, the better. Yes, ham has protein in it, but it is full of salt and you know it's quite processed. So we tend not to go down that road. We look at the leaner meats. So your chicken, your turkey, fish is brilliant because we don't eat enough fish as a society. We should eat more. Uh, and it's a really simple food to break down, which is really good too. Eggs are fantastic. We cook or boil off 10 eggs at a time. I to eat them as a snack when I'm at home. It's a really handy snack too. So they're your protein-based foods. Pulses will have them too. Uh, lentils, uh, quinoa, stuff like that. Again, they're quite good. Beans are handy too. And beans are a really easy way of adding not just protein, but a whole lot more in terms of fiber to a meal. One of the things the Happy Pairs said when we interviewed them years ago at this stage was add a tin. And it's something I've always remembered to do. So I add a tin of beans into a stir fry, into whatever I'm making. I just crack open a tin, whether it is butter beans, uh, kidney beans, it doesn't really matter. There's loads of fiber. There's a good dollop of protein in there too, or even chickpeas. Just add a tin. It's a really good, good way to bulk out your meal and add in some protein with some fiber as well. So there are your protein-based foods. Everyone should know their protein number. That's the first thing. So you should really know how much protein you should be having. Now, you will see loads of different versions of this. The simplest version is 1.5 grams per kilo body weight. So whatever you are in kilograms, you multiply it by 1.5. Now, that's for a general population. Uh, if you are someone who suffers from the disease of severe obesity, you're a little bit different. You don't need 1.5. You need possibly, you need lower. Basically, um, you'll need lower the higher your weight goes over, you know, a certain weight. Uh, if you're incredibly active, so an Ironman triathlete, a marathon runner, you need maybe two grams per kilo body weight. A professional sports player might have three grams per kilo or more. If you look at the English rugby team's Instagram account, it's fascinating. The, the dietitian puts up all their kind of, you know, what they're eating. And it's amazing to watch. But for most people, 1.5 grams per kilo is absolutely perfect. You should spread that out over the course of the day. The way we do it with clients is that each meal contains a portion of protein. What's a portion of protein? It is a fist size. So if you think of a chicken breast, it's roughly the size of your fist. That's your portion of protein. But 25 to 30 grams in that, perfect. It's really good. It'll keep you full, fuller for longer. It'll help you to recover. In terms of protein drinks then and whey protein. So all that is, is if you can't eat enough protein, you drink it. And that's, it's as simple as that. The quality of the protein powder is important. We look at Irish brands. Generally, there are two or three on the market that are very, very good. Uh, they're batch tested. They're controlled. You kind of know what's in there, which is, which is the, the important thing. So Protein powder is just like having a chicken breast, but you have it in a, a drink form. It's exactly the same as that. Some of the more um, some of the more processed ones will have more things in it, higher sugar content, which is not great. So go for the the, the better products, the better one, the better brands. You'll know them. They are they're they're by far the best choice to have. Then in terms of timing of it, post workout is when you need, you need that shake. You can, if you're on the go and rushing, you know, have a protein drink in the morning. I might do it on the train, coming up to the studio sometimes if I'm rushing around. Perfect. It's instead of a meal as opposed to and a meal. 
and that's important too. Uh, it's an easy way to top your protein intake up if you're looking to gain weight, for example. Adding more protein into your diet is a really simple way to do that. So that's what a, pro- a protein shake does. It's there as a supplement. Ideally, you eat it first because not just is the, the, the fact that you get your protein in, but the process of eating burns more calories. The process of eating, there's something joyous about it. Your muscles in your face are doing what they're meant to do. Your teeth do what they're meant to do. So eating generally better, but if you have to supplement it, do. And if you're exercising late at night, it can be a handy way to get protein in after a workout is with some protein milk or a protein shake. That means you have to, don't have to have a really big meal when you get home and try and go to bed. So that's it. Like It's no more confusing than that. It's no more difficult than that. Go for products that have less ingredients on the label. If you do look at a shake or a protein powder, just look at the ingredients list and go for the one with the least amount of ingredients on it because it's the least processed version of the product. Hope that helps. The second question we have is, will lifting weights make me bigger? And again, this is something we see time and time again, um, predominantly from women. They think that by picking up a dumbbell or a barbell, they're going to turn into a bodybuilder. And that's just not necessarily the case. So when you lift weights, you tear your muscle fibers apart. The heavier the weight, the bigger the tear. They're minute tears and they grow back together firmer and tighter. That's basically what happens. Women and men have different hormones. Men will build muscle much quicker. Even myself, if I go work very hard in the gym for a couple of weeks, I will gain muscle quite quickly. And it, it, it's very quick to happen. Women, it takes longer to do. Lifting weights is the single most important thing you can do to protect yourself from the disease of aging. We all suffer from it. It happens to all of us. Those who have more muscle mass will age better. Those who are stronger will age better. The best way to do that is lift weights. To improve your bone density for women going through menopause, you lift weights. It's the it's so important, yet so few people do it. It's about one in ten what we see in our corporate groups when we talk to them. We'll do some form of weight bearing exercise, whether it's a squat or using weights, it doesn't really matter. It's the same thing. So No, you're not going to get bigger. That's the first thing. It's very difficult for women to do that. It takes a very specific body type. It takes a very specific diet and a very specific type of training. Now, different body types will react different ways to exercise. And that's where I have an issue with the one fits all approach. So at that, you know, body types are different. Your apple uh, shaped, your pear shaped, your celery, so straight, straight down from shoulders to hips. They will react differently to certain types of training. So some physiques can take a very heavy load and uh, they can take it, they can shape up really well, but that some need a lighter load in terms of the weights. So it's getting to know your body a little bit, but it is very difficult to get bigger. The key thing you remember is by lifting weights, you're aging better, aging healthier. You're feeling better, you're having better bone density, you're gonna sleep better, deal with stress better. There's nothing lifting weights won't do in terms of improvement. The key, the other key thing, if you are gonna go to a gym and choosing where to lift weights, look around you. Look into that gym. If that gym has a certain physique or body type and that's not what you kind of visualize or, 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 or would like, well, then maybe go to a different gym because there are certain styles of training that will deliver a certain style of physique, whether that is, you know, in terms of the leg shape, bums, whatever it may be. There are certain types and that is important. So have a look in the gym, have a walk around, see what the, the style of training they're, they're, that they're aiming for in terms of the physique. And then, you know, use that to guide your decision. But the key thing is by lifting weights, you're stronger, healthier, it will age better. It is not going to make you bigger on the whole. It's very, 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 very difficult to do that. It's especially for women, it is extremely, extremely hard to do. Um, And the way to track that is measure. So take your tape measure out, measure your legs, measure your calves, measure your biceps, measure your bust. And you can track that too. The other thing that's part of that is that people think that the composition shift changes things that, you know, a muscle weighs more than fat. No, it doesn't. It's exactly the same. But what you might change is your composition. You may have less body fat, which is what you're aiming for, and more muscle mass. And that's what lifting weights will help you to do. And the more muscle mass you have, the healthier you're going to age. The composition change changes, but one doesn't outweigh the other. You may still be nine, you know, nine stone or 10 stone, but the, the composition of muscle and fat will shift with the with exercise and with using weights is the best way to change that. Running, walking, cycling won't deliver the same changes as adding in some weight bearing exercise. So I hope that clears up. You will not get bigger from lifting weights. The physique match, to match what you have in your head to the gym in terms of where you're going to work out. Uh, but the key thing is it's going to help you live better. And that's the most important thing of all. The third question is uh, a life lessons question, pretty much. Is life better in the countryside since you moved to Cork or do you miss Dublin? Um, Okay, 
It's very different, first and foremost. When you move to the country from the city, everything is just a little bit slower. That's the first thing. And it takes a little bit of getting used to. That pace of life that you don't really realise you're in until you move out of it is incredible uh, in terms of the pace of traffic, the pace of just getting at the door in the morning. Everything is just faster in the city. In the countryside, it does slow down, absolutely. One of the things we wanted to test when we moved was, is life better in the country or not? And I have to say, having had two years there now, absolutely it is. It's a much better quality of life. You are outdoors more. Uh, the air is fresher, which is a strange thing to notice when you actually move down and, and, and you live just with less pollution around. It makes a huge difference. Um, stress levels are a little bit lower. Now, you still have a mortgage. You still have school runs and school drops and all the usual stresses of life. But it just is a little bit less stressful. Um, now, is it for everyone? No, not necessarily. It's not. Is it a, a move that we were happy to do and glad that we did? Absolutely it is. It, it's been, we have no regrets whatsoever. That idea of driving them down the, the road with a big truck behind you with all your life in it is a scary thought. Setting up a new business. We have a gym in West Cork now. That was from scratch. To bring a client base, do they, will they come to the gym? Because I'm not in Dublin. And my virtual clients have stayed, but also... We have new clientele coming into the gym now who uh, PT there. And that's, you know, there's loads of risks. But if you listen to the podcast time and time again, the Life Lessons Eps, we ask people and, uh, you know, do you have a, you know, do you regret the risk or, or what's your advice? And they say, jump, go for it. And we would say exactly the same. It's if you're thinking about doing it, absolutely go for it, make it happen and you absolutely won't regret it. The next question is all around walking and can I walk to lose weight? Okay, so weight loss doesn't really matter what you do. That's the most important thing to, to respond to that. In terms of weight and losing weight, how do you do that? You create a calorie deficit. That's where weight loss comes from. A calorie deficit is very simply burning more calories than you're, than you're eating or consuming. F simple. But we all have a basal metabolic rate, a BMR, and BMR is how many calories you burn at rest in a 24-hour period. That number changes with the, the, the body composition. So the more muscle mass you have, the higher that number is going to be. And that tells you that you should, 15, 16, 1700, whatever the number is, you add activity on top of that. And that's how many calories you're going through each day. So say, for example, my own is 2800. Uh, if I add activity on top of that, that, that gets me over 3000. So if I eat two and a half thousand calories, there is a deficit of 500 calories and I will lose weight. It is the basic model for weight loss. There aren't kind of exception to that rule and that's again on Instagram you don't see the exceptions no one talks about that I'm 24 years doing this there are exceptions menopause is one for example so menopause is one that changes all the rules you may not lose any weight even in a calorie deficit um, you know a thyroid function issue below B12 there are you know, reasons that you may not lose weight in a calorie deficit but to create that deficit you eat better and that's not a diet our clients don't really go on a diet they just eat better and by eating better, they eat foods that, has l l that is less processed. They've got to cook it themselves, make it themselves, or if they're buying it, they're buying brown, whole grains, whole meals. So the deficit's created that way, and then you add in exercise. Now, for this question, it's, you know, is it walking? It doesn't really matter what it is. The key thing is that it's one that you enjoy. And by exercising, you burn more calories and you create the calorie deficit. The body doesn't really care how that's created once the calories are burnt up. Now, the key thing there is as you get fitter, you have to work harder to get the same effect from that exercise and burn the same amount of calories. So the key thing to remember there is just keep working hard. But weight loss is that simple. And really what you want to lose is fat. We've talked about that kind of every couple of months. Fat loss is the aim. How do you measure that? A smart scales will do it. And you just track your fat and your muscle and you want to lose body fat. But again, it's that deficit that creates that. And that's the important thing. To track your food, uh, old school is a pen and paper, or you use something like My Fitness Pal. Both really good. My Fitness Pal is complicated, but uh, pen and paper is handier. And once you eat well, and we generally all know how to do it, once you write it down, you get a much more a better sense of how your food is, and you automatically self-correct. It's easy. Uh, having a window to eat within a twelve-hour window makes things a little bit easier as well. And then the exercise, it's just fine what you enjoy. Running, cycling, swimming, walking, it doesn't really matter. Hill walking, yoga, doesn't matter. But the effort level does. So you've got to keep huffing, huffing and puffing, working hard enough to huff and puff. That's about zone three in heart rate. You're burning loads of lovely calories. That's what you want. 
And as you get fitter, you have to work harder to hit that and create that. So just work towards that. Next question uh, is how to lose weight after the holiday. We actually got loads of these in over the summer. Lots of holidays going on. The weather's been so bad. So um, first things first is it may have taken you time to lose weight before the holiday. So don't rush into it. Don't try and go on some detox, which doesn't exist, or some rapid weight loss, which really doesn't last. Give it time. So, you know, give it three weeks. It should take you roughly three weeks to lose your holiday weight. That's what we see with our clients. And that's what, even from my own perspective, that's generally what I'll lose if, if I put weight on on holidays, which is rare enough. But if I do, it'll take two or three weeks to knock it off. That's a, a normal time span. Then just back into your rhythm when you get home. So back into the routine of how you eat, the routine of how you exercise. If you did a quick fix diet leading up to the holiday, guess what? You're not going to want to go near that after the holiday. You won't even have the headspace for it. So don't. Eat normally. Return back to basics. Give it time. Go back into your sleep pattern, your sleep routine, your food pattern and your food routine, your exercise pattern. And over the course of your three or four weeks, it'll knock itself off bit by bit by bit. And that's normal. The key thing around holidays is it's, it's the pre. It, and, you know, some people have an issue with chatting about, oh, why should you lose life for your holidays? Be body confident. Yes, be body confident. Love your body. Why not? Of course. But if you're not aware of your weight and if you go on holidays and you put on, say, half a stone on your holidays and you're not aware of that when you come home, that stays there. Then the next holiday, you put another whatever. And before you know it, you have two or three or four stone up. Now, that's a problem because that's the disease of overweight and the disease of obesity. And that's one of the ways it, 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 one of the ways it's created. It's a consistent adding. Where before holidays, if you work hard and you knock two, three, four pounds off and you go on holidays and you gain three or four or five pounds, well, that, you know, almost balances itself out. So pre-holiday, do work hard. Do know your weight going in. Do know your weight afterwards. It's nothing to do with shaming or being whatever. It's being aware of it. And awareness is really, really important. And we do get back. Give yourself some time. Work at it. Give it three or four weeks and it should come off. And that's what real health and wellness is about. It's not having a stable weight all year round. Your weight should go up and down. It should go up when you go on holidays and have a bit more fun and a bit more alcohol or whatever. It should go up around Christmas. They're all normal. But it's the awareness to pull it back that's important. And that's the really important thing to just be to be mindful of. If you have any more questions for us, you know where we are. It's at Carl Henry PT on Instagram. On Saturdays, uh, the Q&A box is there. Pop your questions in. And as ever, we really hope you enjoyed today's episode of Real Health Me, Carl Henry. Have a wonderful week. We'll see you soon. So long.